So, last year, we were all a little bit bored around this time because the racing had stopped and uh, we didn't actually know at this point when it was going to restart. So there was no Lincoln, there was no uh, Guineas, certainly not in those early weeks and months in March, April and May. Uh, here on GG's we did quite a lot to fill the time and one of the things we did, which was um, surprisingly popular, was a form profiling exercise. So this is the article in question. Um, what I did is I did like a five to follow um, and these were them with the profiles. <clears throat> and then more importantly, I invited readers to uh, have a crack at this themselves um, and put some detail in this article about how to do that. So um, what I have done now is I have refreshed this article for 2021 and you'll see um, the link to the original below. But one thing I wanted to talk about in terms of um, actually, before before I talk about the process, how did it get on? So we ended up with um, <clears throat> about about forty odd horses um, in our profiles for the flat turf season, which I aggregated into this document, and um, a few of them were for all weather as well. So um, each of them was nominated with. Um, suggested optimal conditions. Now, I didn't have the time to do anything quite as um, finessed as that. So what I did is I simply added them all into uh, a query tool angle, <coughs> which I saved. And you can see this is from the 1st of May. So obviously there was no racing until the 1st of June last year, um, up until the end of 2020. So these were all the horses in the list. And slightly unbelievably, certainly to me anyway, um, they they won at a rate of about 11%. They made a profit at SP, which um, for a community collaboration um, was brilliant, really. Um, now, there, there were a couple of highlight horses. There was one horse called Muskika, or Musica, um, which won at 10 to 1 and more importantly at 40 to 1. Um, and that obviously bolsters the, um, well, takes it from a loss to a profit. Um, if you were betting best odds guaranteed or particularly Betfair SP, you would have smashed this eight points profit out of the park. Um, how sustainable that is, I don't know. So um, that's what brings us to here. And I thought we might we might have a crack at this again uh, for 2021 as we tick around from the jumps to the flat seems like a good time to do that so um in in this document uh, the original i had um some details about how to find these horses so you can do it with the query tool um selecting last two years um one of uk or ireland flat turf um <clears throat> and you know whatever other conditions which uh, are appropriate i generally was looking at exposed handicappers so i already always selected the handicap range um, and then I'd get like a long list of qualifiers which was too big um, and whittled that by distance so I put in this example five to six furlongs so I was looking at specifically a sprint handicappers um, and then I selected the query tool option for horse uh, and sorted by wins <coughs> excuse me and that gave me a list like this um, and then for each of these, I was able to go to one of their races uh, and get the detail. And I was using full form to profile those runners last year. Now, since then, doesn't time fly, we've added the awesome profiler tool uh, to our to our kit and caboodle. And um, this is it. So what in order to find a horse, let's say we had um, we had highly sprung here. So what I did, um, I just used the horse search box uh, at the top right on the race card page. Clicked go 
it's given me highly sprung here and then when i selected the horse um it opened up his form window uh full form down here and i just clicked on one of his historical races the top one as it happened um and that opens up the the race result for that race which is this um opened up on this tab so that's that race and then i went to the profiler tab now at some point we'll have a a separate profiler page where we just cut out this middle bit and you can do a search and profile the thing in just within the page um, so it's a little bit more convoluted at this stage but not not massively that took about you know 20 seconds maybe um, then when we're on the profiler we need to make sure we've got the right horse so this is medicine jack who's the top horse in the list and i've got to go down to here to find highly sprung um, and the profiler displays highly sprung's form by all of let's make this small a minute so you can see all the parameters we've got going distance class course field and so on all right so there's a lot of um we can we can really get down and dirty with um, a horse that's got a good body of evidence and understand uh the the kind of the parameters that suit that horse best so let's these plus and minus buttons, uh, Constantina, these or uh, what's the words I'm looking for? Um, uh, I can't think. Anyway, I, they open and close it. <laughs> That'll do. Um, trying to be too clever as usual. So um, the light blue lines on here are specifically in relation to this particular race at Newcastle in which Highly Sprung ran. So you have to kind of condition your brain to ignore those. It's quite hard because they, they they are designed to draw the eye. Um, but if we if we do ignore them, we can immediately see, you know, very quickly, good to firm going, amazing record, right? Good to firm, um, all wins at six furlongs, right? Okay, class four and five, okay. Um, Pontifract, interesting. New market, interesting. I'd be a little bit more careful with course than than I would with. You know some of these top ones but certainly uh, distance and class and going um, uh, and field size no good in big fields it might be worth looking at that 12 to 15 we might find that the two wins were in let's say 12 runner fields um, normally when carrying more weight when a better horse in a in a slightly weaker race by the look of it trainer doesn't matter um, <clears throat> wouldn't get too hung up on jockeys odds range uh when he's been a big price he, he's normally won when some degree of expectation there uh, and we've already got enough here you know so um we could we could go to war with that so what i would do um i think the easiest way to do this is to go to the query tool uh let's do that and um if i can find it there he is right i'm going to reset this I'm going to search for under horse. I'm going to search for highly sprung. Highly sprung. Okay. Generate report. And that gives his full form. And now I'm going to add into that some of these profile conditions. So good to firm. Um, six furlongs. Class four and five. Let's do that. So uh, race going. Good to firm. Uh, distance six furlongs. Class four five. And that'll do. Eight wins from 13 runs. Um, and we can see that those parameters included a 10 to 1 score last season. Uh, he's won every year at least once since um, 2016. If we sort by year, <clears throat> we can see he's made a profit under these conditions every year. Um, so this is a an interesting course. Now he's obviously knocking on a little bit now. Highly sprung. Um, let's have a look here a second. He is. I think he's eight now. Yeah, he was seven in 20, in October 2020. So he, he is an eight-year-old now. 
um, obviously retains ability as that as that win shows. Um, he's rated. He was rated seventy one here, uh, and ran beaten two and a half lengths or so. So he will have he will have dropped down a little bit more. So he'd be in naught to seventies again now. Um, one thing I didn't look at was his um, by uh, official rating, and we can do that. We can just if we search by official rating, we can see that um, he's one off as high as eighty three. 81, 77. So he's actually dangerously well handicapped now. Um, and he'd be a horse where, you know, from a mark of 70 odd, um, pretty much all of his wins under these conditions, uh, six furlong, good to firm, class four or five, um, have been off higher marks. Now, the, the one thing to bear in mind there is that he is an eight year old now, and it's possible he's a little bit regressive. Um, that's probably going to be factored into his price. Um, trainer Les Air, something is suggesting to me that he is an early season trainer, that he has his horses in form early season. I have to double check that. Don't take my word for that. You know, we've, <laughs> one of the things about GG's, the, the awesome things about GG's is that, um, we've got tools where you never have to take anybody's word for anything. You can go and, validate stuff for yourself and that's massively empowering particularly when as is often the case those people who are paid to talk on tv get it wrong um and you know to some degree I, it's forgivable because they have to fill a lot of airtime and they have to do it on the fly whereas we can do this stuff in our own time um but nevertheless we definitely shouldn't be taking other people's word for stuff that we can go and um, check out for ourselves particularly around draw and pace but also when they talk about a trainer being in form and they've had one winner you know which was earlier on the card or something which is stuck in the mind we need to go and verify this stuff for ourselves um, Gigi's obviously facilitates that uh, very well I hope I think and um, so that's that but whether or not Les Air is an early season trainer highly sprung is clearly off a workable mark as you can see when he won his race under optimal conditions six furlongs good to firm class four um he was off 81 and then class three <clears throat> good ground class two good to firm actually ran really well there on good to firm again um only beaten four lengths in the uh, stewards cup consolation race so you know that's a it's a 50 to one shot there um Good to firm looks material for him. Uh, ra again, ran well. That's probably the St. Wilfred. Yep. Yeah. Um, you know, ran a, a, another fine race, only beaten two lengths. And, and, um, ah, okay. So one, <laughs> one thing I've just spotted is it looks like he's got a separate, uh, rating for his all weather form. How unfortunate. That's, that's pooped on my chips a little bit. Um, so he's probably quite, if we just put this on flat turf, um, yeah, he's still rated around, probably around 80. But still, he can he can win off that mark. He's one off 83, he's one off 81. So <clears throat> that mark wouldn't, you know, he's not obviously as fantastically well handicapped as I hoped he was, but he's still handicapped to win. And um, six furlongs, good to firm, class four or five, uh, highly sprung's on the list so um, that's one example of a horse to be profiled I will as I did last time if I can find the, the page I'm looking for here we are what what I also did is I I provided a list of races um, and um, I did that by just looking for the big field the big field handicaps over five and six furlongs and then linked to them um, in here to the full result so if you go to the full result like let's go to this race here which is a bit out of date now um, and from here we can then go to the profiler and we can profile any horse that was in this race and you know you can like if you know <clears throat> seven furlong heritage handicaps you'll recognize a lot of these guys immediately because they're they turn up every time for these races so um, we can jump straight into 
uh, the profile at all, we can go to, let's have a look at, um, Kinren's a good one, always seems to, actually he's probably not a good one because he always makes the frame without winning, Raising Sand might be slightly better, and we can look at Raising Sand's form, you can see good, good to soft, um, seven or a mile, class two or three, Ascot, which is a straight track, which is interesting, you can go down to the bottom here, um, and you can see that his Actually, his record on turning tracks is fine as well. Um, so probably not, probably not a prerequisite that he has a straight track. In fact, definitely not a prerequisite. Um, uh, what else can we say? Bigger fields. Although again, it's you know his record is is compelling all the way down. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and this is what we can do. We can you know play around with any any horse from any race that's got a body of form. So in the case of Raising Sand, um, he has run career 29 times, which is a <clears throat> a nice number for us to play with. So that's the challenge again, same as last year. Um, I want us to come up with some horses which have got a set of criteria which, when matched, uh, make them pretty formidable. It's a community project, so I'm hoping to get, last year we got 40 odd, um, I think if we got 25 uh, that would be great and um, I can produce a little document like this for them with your comments on um, any notes or observations on ideal setup um, <clears throat> and we can go forward with that. What I'm also going to do is you'll find on this page, um, you can't find my blue thing now, where am I? Lost it. Anyway, you'll find on uh, the page that this video is on a link to a form, a Google form, and what that will do is it will just make it a lot easier for me to um, to format the document because all of the responses will be in the same format. Um, <clears throat> so that's me uh, learning from last year and thinking ahead a little bit. Uh, I hope you'll um, have a crack at this. The list of races, or a suggested list of races, is below the video also. Um, this is, of course, an open-ended task, so please don't be, don't feel constrained to that list of races. If you've got a horse in mind, go and research that horse. I hope that you'll have a crack at it. I hope you'll fill out the form with your suggestion, and I really look forward to seeing what you come up with. Thanks for taking part, and uh, Matt Bizonian saying goodbye for now.